Hi, my name is Vijay Meduri and I'm the VP of Engineering of the PCI Express product line. What I have here today is um, a description of how we can build a PCI Express cluster using very cost-effective uh, PCI Express switches and relevant bridges. And what I've drawn here is um, a, a block view of a cluster using a PCI Express fabric. And I'll go over the key features um, that make the fabric very cost-effective and low power. And I'll briefly touch on uh, you know, what are the main reasons for the low power and the low cost. So what we have here is um, uh, multiple CPUs. And if you, if you uh, take the CPU to be a node, and the node could be uh, in, a, in a blade chassis form factor or in a pizza box, uh, one U or two U box form factor, or even mini PCI Express towers. Uh, each of the CPUs are connected uh, to uh, a PCIe fabric through a PCIe extender. The PCIe extender is essentially a, a two-port PCI Express switch. It could be a by eight lanes in and a by eight lanes out, or a by four in and a by four out. And each of the lanes, uh, each of the PCI Express lanes, uh, can support 2.5 gigabits per second, or five gigabits, or eight uh, gigabits per second, based on the product family that you select from. So the, uh, the, the host to host communication uh, can take place directly between CPU to CPU through the PCI Express fabric or through uh, a shared NIC. And I'll briefly talk about what the shared NIC is uh, in a moment. Uh, so in, for, for very um, latency critical or you know, um, uh, applications where latency is paramount, you could pretty much do memory to memory uh, transfers or writes uh, using the PCI Express fabric. And the PCIe extenders um, are very low cost, very low power, high performance, and the, the PCIe fabric itself supports full peer-to-peer -peer functionality. So you get on a 48 lane switch uh, in Gen 3, you have essentially 96 gigabytes per second of performance of throughput that's available to you to send through the PCIe 48 lane switch. What I've drawn here also is uh, an SRIOV NIC, and uh, a, 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 you know, a, a normal NIC, and a converged adapter where you know, the FCOE adapters. So these adapters, or these NICs, uh, tend to have a lot of buffering, and uh, tend to have a lot of um, uh, uh, other features that make it appropriate uh, in, a, in a data center uh, kind of a topology. But for just uh, for a low scale out number of nodes, I'm talking about uh, you know 30 nodes, 80 nodes, uh, you know up to 200 nodes, you could just use a PCI Express fabric directly to communicate uh, with the other nodes and um, use the uh, NICs or the CNAs or the adapters, fiber channel adapters, to uh, uh, as a gateway to talk and to uh, and to get more scale out. Now I'll go over the key features that, uh, the key hardware features that will enable us to actually use a PCI Express extender um, as a host-to-host -host communication agent and as a device that will enable us to uh, you know, send memory transactions from one memory to the other memory. So what are the key hardware features that enable PCI Express to be a clustering uh, interconnect? Uh, so the first thing is obviously uh, PCI Express uh, extending over a cable or expanding to go from uh, a pizza box to a pizza box or from a rack to a rack. And uh, there, there's a cabling uh, uh, work group in the PCI SIG and there are multiple demonstrations of PCI Express cables going all the way from uh, one meter to 100 meters over an optical interconnect. The other key feature is um, you know, non-transparency in a PCIe uh, switch. Essentially, what does non-transparency do for you? It allows you to isolate the host domains among the multiple um, uh, you know, uh, hosts. Uh, in, in this scenario, I've drawn a switch with two non-transparent ports. And in this case, CPU1 um, you know, enumerates and discovers all the, uh, the devices in this domain. 
And in this domain, CPU2 does all the discovery enumeration. There's an address translation mechanism that enables both of these devices to talk to each other. So you've achieved the, um, uh, the key benefit of PCI Express in being backwards uh, software compatible, and you're also doing you know, a multi-host uh, uh, configuration. The other key feature is a DMA uh, engine. So uh, the uh, non-transparent devices that um, uh, PLX uh, provides also have a very uh, powerful but a very light DMA engine that sits on the switch and can move traffic from any port to any other port. So you can move traffic from the uh, you know, memory of CPU1 to the memory of CPU2, and you could do it in a manner such that it's compatible to all the uh, uh, you know, software that already exists uh, you know, currently. You could, you, could put, you could do it in a manner so that a non-transparent port shows up like a NIC device to the software stack, and you could just treat it like a normal NIC. The uh, fourth key feature is spec spectrum isolation. So typically, each of these CPUs uh, have their own spec spectrum clocking domain. And uh, you need to have an ability to isolate these domains so that you could, you could uh, you know, talk to each other. So the uh, PCI Express uh, uh, devices that uh, uh, PLX provides support spec spectrum isolation. The other big benefit is shared I.O. And uh, essentially, uh, this provides the ability for multiple VMs uh, you know, uh, virtual managers on a, on a given CPU to share uh, the same I.O. device, or even among multiple hosts to share the same I.O. device. And uh, there is um, a, a different video demonstration uh, at, at PLX that shows how to share an SRIOV NIC from Netirion, uh, now a part of XR, between multiple hosts. The other key benefit of a PCI Express fabric is it's a lossless fabric. Every link has uh, an ACNAC protocol, so you're guaranteed for the traffic to uh, you know, go from one node to the other node. The, uh, what, it doesn't, what it doesn't have is uh, a congestion management automatic uh, protocol at the fabric level. Node to node, the, uh, or you know, a switch, or a point to point within a PCI Express link, they are uh, credit based, so you have flow control. But at a fabric level, uh, there's no congestion management that, that takes place automatically. So that's a, um, uh, you know, a negative in one sense, also a positive in the other sense. The, uh, the, the negative obviously being you, you know, the limits on scale out. Uh, the positives is the fabric can be much lighter and your protocol is much lighter and you could just rely on link to link uh, uh, flow uh, ACNAC um, reliability. Now, how do you solve the problem of congestion is at your software layer, at the software level, you could essentially have uh, you know, a very simple credit-based scheme that uh, takes care of congestion in a, in a, in a, in a small scale-out. I'm talking about in a scale-out of about 200 nodes. You can, you can have very simple schemes that take care of the congestion problem. And so you get the benefit of a very light, high-performance, low-power fabric and with, uh, with, with, with some basic uh, software-level congestion management features. The, the last, uh, but one of the most important uh, features of PCI Express is it's backward compatible to a lot of the PCI legacy software that's out there. There, there, there are millions of PCs out there with PCI uh, that PCI understand the PCI uh, load store software address model, and the PCI Express fabric is essentially compatible to all that. So the next obvious question is, now that uh, you're convinced that you can make a small cluster using PCI Express, and you can build some very basic uh, uh, software la level condition management features. The next step is how do you get scale out? So what I've drawn here is a sample topology, and you know you could you could do different you know different ways to do this. Uh, what I've drawn is a kind of a disaggregated cluster, or um, a, a, a set of mini clusters. So each of the mini cluster has uh, a PCI Express fabric that's connecting the multiple nodes in the cluster. And you could go from one mini cluster to the other mini, mini cluster just through a PCI Express fabric. Or you could bridge over through a gateway through an Ethernet fabric or any other uh, um, fabric topology that, uh, that, that you use in the normal data center. The benefit with this is that you don't have the um, a burden of uh, uh, you know a heavy duty controller on every node sitting on your mini cluster. You could just keep it native PCI Express, 
because that's what's coming out of the uh, CPUs and the chipsets. You have PCI Express already coming out of the chipsets. So you just extend that to talk to the multiple nodes and you get a very low latency, high performance interconnect and very low cost and low power. And you could talk between the various um, uh, mini clusters and then you could use at some point, use gateways to ethernet or even InfiniBand uh, to, to get further scale out. And the next question that comes up is, how do you do management? How do you do uh, this whole fabric management? And essentially, what you could do is you could just use the same, uh, you know, take for example, Ethernet uh, software management. You could, you could stay within the framework of uh, the, the, the management that is done for a normal controller. And at the host level, you can make it look like the same uh, Ethernet management software. And you know, subsequent uh, presentations, I'll be showing you how you can build your software layer so that you're pretty much within the framework of an Ethernet management software stack and yet you can get the benefits of a PCI Express fabric within a small cluster. So what have we learned today? So we've um, uh, uh, gone over the uh, basic building blocks of a PCI Express fabric and the essential elements in a PCIe extender that enables a PCI Express fabric to scale out between multiple hosts. And we also uh, talked about how you can share uh, NICs or uh, adapters, SRIOV adapters, among multiple hosts or between the VMs on the same host. And the key to understand here is that PCI Express um, uh, is, is, a, is a very efficient um, and high performance fabric that has significant cost efficiencies because it, it, it goes into multiple platforms and multiple product segments. You can take it to extend it and build mini clusters or small clusters and then you can get further scale out uh, by using gateways to Ethernet or InfiniBand or uh, any other uh, protocol type. Uh, so with that, uh, if, you need, if you want more information, please visit the PLX website at uh, www.plxtech.com and there's a segment on cloud uh, infrastructure and uh, uh, you know, you'll have multiple presentations and white papers on this topic there. Thank you.